continuing here our preparations for New England. Obviously, uh, um, last week's result was disappointing. Um, we need to and have corrected it, need to learn from it, and uh, continue to work hard to be a better team, to play better, um, to be more consistent. And that has to start this Monday uh, you know, against the New England Patriots. So uh, a great challenge ahead of us with uh, the Patriots on the road, a, a great stadium, great atmosphere. Have had a chance to coach up there a few times and since they built the new one. And, um, you know, one of the, you know, a, a great team here for the for this decade and uh, starts with uh, Tom Brady and his ability to to move the football and the team up and down the field um, uh, in most situations. Um, Wes Welker, uh, his, one of his go-to guys is playing at just an unbelievable level right now. I mean, something that uh, I haven't seen uh, um, uh, somebody be over 1,000 yards as quick as he has and just his toughness, his run after catch, his feel, uh, his ability to, to beat coverage no matter how people are playing. Um, Deion Branch, uh, you know, back there in New England and is a highly skilled receiver that obviously uh, Tom has great confidence in. Uh, these newcomer tight ends and Gronkowski and Hernandez are both uh, really talented guys in different ways. Gronkowski, um, and obviously uh, the quarterback trusts and, and throws it to him uh, regardless of whether he's covered or not. And, and Gronkowski generally finds a way to come down with the ball, just phenomenal ability to, to use his body and, and make plays in the field and in the red area. Hernandez, again, uh, extremely talented uh, tight end. Uh, that they treat uh, as much as anything like a wide receiver uh, a lot of times, and they move them around and put them in positions uh, to make plays. So um, and from the passing game standpoint, it's obviously something they, they like to do. Um, they uh, are a winning team that throws more than they run, but it doesn't mean they don't run well. When they run, they're efficient and uh, very successful doing it. So. Uh, great challenge uh, for our defense to to defend uh, this offense and uh, for our offense versus their defense. Uh, I believe it starts up the middle with Wilfork, and uh, he's a very disruptive, smart player that uh, uh, gets in the way a lot of the time. And, and it doesn't matter whether it's run or pass, he's a disruptive force in there. Um, uh, linebackers, they got a unique young group uh, generally um, with uh, the two guys that I can't pronounce, uh, you know, that I can't pronounce their names, but uh, I'm not even going to try. Kudit, how do you say it? You will try. That's, uh... <laughs> so, and then Mayo, Gerard Mayo, who, you know, is a, is a talented, talented player in there that they've had to move around uh, in different spots to to overcome some of the injury issues they've had, but he's a heck of a player. And then the secondary, you know, has, has had some of their own injury issues, but uh, a competitive, competitive group that, uh, that as you watch the tape, they seem to uh, make big plays when it matters most and, and which has allowed them to uh, win games uh, and big games. So um, offensively and defensively, we have a great challenge. We have to, to make a lot of progress this week and go out and play our best game of the year. Any but questions? You mentioned the injuries, but is there anything, they have the third, second, I think it is, ranked past defense. You mentioned the injuries, but is there anything specific that you've seen teams, you know? Well, I think, you, you know, one of the easy things to overlook is that their offense is very good at scoring points. And, uh, you know, that affects their time of possession and, and puts the defense, you know, puts the defense sometimes in situations where they have to go back out and 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 play a lot against teams that are behind a lot of the time, and so teams are throwing, 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 and uh, you know they win a lot of games, and uh, you know I know much like our philosophy is, it, it you know the statistics don't really matter, you know it's it's winning and losing, and uh, you know they do a good job of winning a lot of the time, so. Defensively, I mean, they uh, look like they're capable of doing whatever they need to do, and, and that's generally the way it looks like they get ready to, to play each week. 
But I saw that you said on the radio today that Matt had a surgery. Can you just give us an update on how he did? And Everything um, went it went really well. And uh, again, I, you know, we're just given as much time as we can to see exactly where he is and uh, you know when you know as we make decisions you know we will let you know but we have not done anything uh, with Matt yet as far as uh, his status. So there's still hope that he can come back uh, at some point this year? Yeah I mean I, don't, I, I won't get into it too much but yeah I would say there's there's a potential but again that uh, really depends here on you know, this first week and how, how things go. So. Did you have the, the procedure today, yesterday? Uh, what's today? Today is Wednesday. So he had it, uh, he had it Monday, late Monday. You're going to go into this game though with just the two quarterbacks? Yeah. Yeah, you know, unless something were to happen this week, um, you know, Tyler Palco will be our starter and, and Ricky will be our uh, backup. Because most of those guys haven't played a whole lot. How, how, how do you split up the snaps and practice this week? Like you always do one versus two, or do you have to change that around a little bit given what you're facing here? No, you know, I think we, we have to get Tyler Palco ready to go. And, uh, but uh, that's the same issue we have every week with uh, Matt. And, you know, we still have to give the number two a, a couple snaps in each period um, to make sure that. Uh, we're at least giving him a, uh, a chance to uh, not only see the game plan, but feel it a little bit. And, uh, you know, that will we'll stay kind of status quo that way. Good thing is we got an extra day. So, you know, uh, any time we have is good time for, for Tyler specifically. Will that travel to New England? And help uh, again, we're, uh, we're still figuring some of those things out. You know, it's, uh, you know, number one priority is getting him you know, making sure all of that goes well and, and uh, that he comes out of it without any kind of issues and as fast as possible. Who's your number three quarterback? Uh, our number three quarterback uh, could be a number of guys, you know, depending upon the game day roster. But we have uh, multiple guys that we do give snaps to and, tra you know, and get center snaps and have a, a package of plays that uh, they will be ready for and again that that varies depending upon um, you know who's been active and who's not because uh, some of them are affected but uh, you know like I said we've this is the way we've been going you know with two and um, you know obviously you're you can't afford a lot to happen but uh, you know that's where we are okay the, uh, we talked the other day about uh, uh, pass protection and, and uh, everybody zeroes in on the offensive line, blames them, but there are other factors. What are the moving parts, in your mind, of pass protection? Obviously, offensive line, obviously, the quarterback has to get rid of the ball and make decisions, but what other parts are there when you? Well, I think, you know, when you look at a team like us that uses, uh, you know, so much of the time we are using extra players in the protection, you know, uh, and it all it varies from tight ends to backs to receivers even. So, um, you know, that's kind of the way that uh, I've always operated offensively of that, uh, you, you know, if you ask any quarterback, any quarterback wants all receivers out and backs every time uh, because that's more options and, and helps with the spacing. But at the same time, you know, again, just the way that I've been taught and believe, you know, you must uh, – consider protection in every pass play that you that you decide to run and uh, you know just always worked hard at it uh, generally had uh, decent success in protecting the quarterback um, but uh, we have to be better but it involves you know all components of the offense you know because if the receivers aren't doing uh, doing it the way that they're supposed to do it and it creates a spacing issue uh, then that's a problem. If the additional protectors aren't doing what they're supposed to do or fitting where they're supposed to fit or, or blocking their proper protection then, uh, or their assigned protection, then that's an issue. Um, and, you know, that then makes for a, for a very complicated uh, situation that everybody has to deal with and you just, you know, you have to execute. It ultimately comes down to executing, you know, at, at all areas, all positions. and. And I really believe, you know, they all have to be executing efficiently to, to have plays go the way they need to go.
Is that why we don't we so infrequently see you offense and five wide empty backfield? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say that that has a lot to do with it, you know, and, uh, you know, there's different ways to help uh, protect, and some of those are movement, uh, moving pockets, naked bootlegs. Um, there's multiple ways to do it, but again, we uh, generally try to really play to the strength of our players, you know, and, and the quarterbacks included in that, and uh, the line, the receivers, everybody, and uh, and. You know, that makes for a challenge each week, especially some of the you know these defensive lines and rushers that you see on a weekly basis. They have one who's had some rejuvenation. Uh, can you talk a little about what Carter's done? Well, Andre really has. You know, he's been a player that we've had to game plan a bunch uh, for through the years, just the different places I've been. But uh, uh, you know, and Jim Zorn had experience with him. You know, being there together, but uh, he really has. I mean, he's a he's a long. Lean looks like a pass rusher, and uh, he really has. You know, like a bunch of players that have have gone to New England uh, through the years. Uh, you know, he's playing at a high level, and he's definitely, you know, one of their premier pass rushers. And they're, they're, you know, they did a really good job of creating pressure last week. As a watcher of receivers and evaluator receivers, but what what is it that makes Walker? What he is. I mean, he obviously has a great quarterback, but there's so much, there's got to be so much more than that. Yeah, well, I think you have to take the quarterback uh, number one because uh, somebody has to throw him the ball, and their uh, their connection is uh, is really uh, something special uh, to watch. You know, as long as you're not the one, you know, that's not the group you're getting ready for, which is the case this week. But you know, I think that Wes is extremely, extremely bright. A uh, football player with a high football IQ. Um, you know, I, I coached a guy in Wayne Corbett that uh, had, you know, you see, you definitely see some similarities and and the toughness, the hands obviously are just as premier hands. I mean, he just catches most anything that he can touch regardless of the circumstances and who's on him. Uh, and uh, and then, but his his football IQ and ability to read and understand what's going on and who's trying to cover them is, uh, is second to none right now, you know, just as far as guys that play in that slot and, and have to deal with so many, uh, such a variety of looks. And, and uh, you know, to me, that's what sets him apart, you know, that along with the connection with the quarterback and that he just knows how to get open and he knows where the opening is. So uh, really just a, a great player, you know, and, and impressive to watch. Did you evaluate him? Did you like him coming out of tech? Was that a guy that you noticed, or was he not yet that developed? No, I mean you notice uh, you notice uh, guys that are productive and and play tough and play physical, and none of that's ever changed. I mean, with him, I mean he's a, you know, when they ask him to to block or when he's put into in that spotlight position, I mean he will he will crack, fight, claw, do whatever he has to do, and 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 get his block, and it's. Uh, it's one of the impressive things about him. But what I was going to say is, you know, at Tech, I mean, at Tech, they're really great at moving the football down the field. And one of the first uh, teams, early teams, that was really uh, utilizing the spread and, you know, and, you, you know, and evaluating those guys, it's, it's always difficult because, you know, you see guys making 100 catches, you know, and there's two or three of them generally. But uh, obviously, Wes has set himself apart from, Really, anybody right now? The, the, the buzz about him coming out was as a return. Everybody was excited about him as a return. Yeah, and, and those guys get lost in that mix, and and that's why it's uh, it's. But obviously, uh, he's found his way, and that's what we always tell the players that uh, if you're really good, somebody will usually find out at some point. And uh, I think those are the great stories that you see.